Let's put it on the scale. Hoka Challenger ATR7. There it is. So good. I like that colorway. A little coral action. Okay, put it on the scale. By the way, we did a 26 mile run, a 10 mile run, and I believe a four mile run in this shoe. 8.4 ounces. I'm comparing it right now to the Mafate Speed 4. So 8.2. Let me just zero this out real quick. Hold on, hold on. There we go. I think. What? Oh my goodness. Okay, is that for real? 9.4 for the Mafate? I thought I was feeling a similar, an eight, this is an ounce heavier. That's unbelievable. All right, there's the drop on your screen, okay? Along with the weight and the score, that's awesome. I mean, I'm just blown away that it's an uh, that it's that light considering the midsole stack height. That's a pretty solid stack height for that type of weight, all right? Engineered mesh, redesigned for a more plush feel. And I love it. Good work there. Made out of recycled materials. That heel counter, I'll tell you now, is my positive for the entire shoe design. Just, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, it's a, I'm a heartthrob for a heel counter, and he, sorry, heel flare, I should say. The elf heel, I just love it. It hugs the Achilles tendon. Great job there, Hoka, on that heel counter, and right up on into the heel tab as well. Looking at a full gusset. Okay, there you go, full gusset. Not quite the butterfly effect through that tongue, but definitely approaching it there. Um, really, and actually fairly breathable, which keep that in mind if you're training in these cold, frigid temperatures, you might want to wear some thicker socks in the Challenger ATR7. And by the way, I thought it was not available, but I believe it is available. We will link to it, at least to the Challenger family down below in the description, just so you know. There's my scores for the upper midsole. There you go, CMEVA. I was ranging between 38 and 42 for the durometer, which you all know, there's 41 on the uh, uh, medial side, and then on the lateral side here, although well, that was get 44. Okay, so yeah, I was ranging 41 there. All right, so there's the general range for that durometer. Right and energy, nothing to write home about, but getting the job done. Does that make sense? It's, uh, and let's do the thumb test as well. Oh, nice. It, that's, okay. It's soft-ish, but it's not throwing the thumb back, if that makes, so I'm not gonna say like, that's why the score is not better, all right? And let's do the twist test. Did I say it's a neutral trail running shoe? All right, it's twisty, but I'll put, it's not twisting very much actually, as I do the twist test there. Um, outsole, road to trail. I think it's gonna be a great comm commuter. I would not use this trail shoe on aggressive, aggressive trails. I would not use this trail shoe on icy or slick conditions. It's not that type of outsole at all, okay? It's got exposed CMEVA there on the outsole, which is kind of flat there. Bottom line, I felt fine, but I was not confident with respect to the trickier sections of trail running that I was doing, all right? This is not a big, big mountain trail shoe, but a good commuter shoe, okay? Just get out your door, run a couple miles on the concrete and pavement, hit the trails for five miles, and then back to your place of residence, <laughs> if I can call it that. There you go, fit and the comfort score on your screen, standard all across. I am seeing breakdown already. Pretty quick, actually, yeah, the CMEVA, not, not only on the outsole, but also on the lateral side, and let's see, and a little bit on the, sorry, on the, yeah, a little bit on the medial side as well on that exposed CMEVA, okay? So I'm going 300 miles, I think is where I put it. Not awesome. Now, as always, send me pictures, but mm, I'm not too, oh yeah, and I also noticed a smidge, just a smidge of fraying on the toe box. Just a little, all right, not a, nothing crazy, but just keep it in mind as I have already taken it past that 25 mile and 2500 mark for the elevation gain, all right? Price point, not bad. 145, you know, for a trail shoe, not bad. Uh, that would be amazing if it was 135, but 145, we will take it for the price point there. All right, shoe quick specs one more time on your screen. Soak them all in. Um, oh yeah, did I also forgot to mention, it's Durabrasion rubber. So the rubber, the green on the outsole looks awesome, but it's that exposed CMEVA that's just uh, already starting to get chewed up there under step and other shoes to buy. I want to innovate Trailfly Ultra G280, the React Pegasus, which 
Got a great score. I think it was a 7.8 7 from Nike. 7.8, 7.7, uh, right around there. Uh, I'll, I'll do my best to link to it in the description. I'm kind of excited about that shoe from, no, way more excited about the outsole, I will say, on that Nike React. Pegasus Trail 4, and then last but not least, the Saucony Peregrine 12. All right, coming in okay at 6.7 out of 10. Um, I think durability is the big thing. I'm just noticing, like, it's just getting chewed up. I'm just seeing it. And, you know, it's the Rocky Mountains out here in Colorado. So the, uh, the mountains, the rocks don't mess around. They eat up shoes pretty, uh, pretty quickly if it's exposed too, too much there on the outsole and even on the midsole. Onward we go. There is the comment of the day from Tudor Cretu. Soak it in. If you want to hit pause, go for it there. And that question of the day. Uh, what is your favorite feature for a trail running shoe? All right, what is your favorite feature? All right, take it any direction you want. Maybe it's, maybe it's the ride. Maybe it's the sh maybe it's the shoelaces. Maybe it's the tongue. Maybe it's the insole. Maybe it's uh, the vamp. Oh my goodness, the options are endless. All right, we'll toss it to the trail running shoe playlist. Trail running shoe playlist, right there, right there, right there. Thank you, Hoka, for making it happen all right seek beauty work hard and love each other see you tomorrow